On this model, I can remove the skull. I can actually pull out a hemisphere of the brain. And with this, I can remove the sections of the brain, the different lobes of the brain, that is. And what I have on the inside, of course, is that diencephalon. Again, this diencephalon is going to sit nicely right inside here. If I take this concept and put it all together, what happens here is when I look at the cranial floor and I have the brain, I put this brain inside of here. Does that make sense? I'm taking half the brain and I'm setting inside here. Again, this is a lateral view. This would be a sagittal view. I'm putting the entire brain inside here. If I have this smaller structure and again, match this up nicely, you can sort of picture how this smaller diencephalon fits inside of the larger brain as a whole. These two are going to be just like this, matched up. Of course, this is embedded inside. You can even see that middle cerebral artery running through here, and you get a sense for understanding why that's running through the middle of the brain. In fact, if I take this together and put these two back in place, that's why we call this the diencephalon. Dia means through, and cephalos, again, comes from the term encephalos, meaning brain. So through the brain, because this is going to be embedded inside of here. It's through the brain. So diencephalon. Another thing I'd like to demonstrate from the brain here is a little bit closer look at this right here. I mentioned this was the thalamus, okay? If this is the thalamus, it, it really, some students just start to think that, okay, well, maybe that's just the thalamus and that's it right there, okay? In reality, it's much larger than that. And let me show you, if you'll remember, this model here, okay? One of the things I showed you when we looked at the blood supply was that I could take this and kind of pull it right out of here. You can imagine this sitting inside the brain like so. If I do that and I show you these two together, imagine this embedded inside of this. What I mean by that is if I open this up, and by the way, you are looking at the mesencephalon, the pons, and I'm holding the medulla. These are actually the thalmic hemispheres. So again, because this is facing us right now, this would be the right thalmic hemisphere. This would be the left thalmic hemisphere. If I take these and I, come on, if I pop them apart, all right, what you're actually seeing here is a mirror image. Do you see that? This is inside. And here's the mirror image of it. It should look similar on both sides. But this, like I said, is actually embedded on the other side. So the thalamic hemisphere that I'm tapping right now would be deep inside here, the area that I'm tapping right now. So again, when I call this the thalamus, what I'm really talking about if you see it on this side, is this structure here, which, believe me, goes much larger than that.